Hi everyone, once again it's minus 20 here in Calgary so not much to do except uh, going to screen time and what better way to spend your time than learning how to do more ultrasound. So today we're going to look at lung ultrasound and by the end of this video I want you to feel confident enough to pick up a probe starting to look at lungs and recognize some pathology. That would be the goal of this video. So what are the pros of lung ultrasound? Firstly, very wide, wide, wide availability these days. Almost everybody will have the uh, linear probe and the curved probe available to them. There's a lack of radiation, portability, and more importantly, there's immediate interpretation with the ability to follow things across time. And it's a very easy to learn skill. Com compared to a lot of the other ultrasound modalities, this is really very, very easy to learn. Here are the two probes that you will need. This is the linear probe and then the curved probe or the curved linear probe. Uh, this is the higher frequency probe, which means that you will get more detail but less penetration. This is the lower frequency probe, one to five, uh, with more depth but less detail. So a couple of principles. Long ultrasound depends mostly on artifacts. And what's fantastic about this is that most of the life-threatening disorders are superficial, so easy to identify with ultrasound. What can we see on this lung ultrasound? We can see alveolar fluid. We can see atelectasis, consolidation. We can see whether the lung is moving or not, whether there's plural fluid presence, whether there's air, plural air present. So we can't actually see the plural air because of course ultrasound can't see air. So this is mostly diagnosed by the absence of normal. So how to start? So the first thing you want to do um, a normal scan, you are going to uh, for the um, linear probe um, in the uh, so just below your clavicle area, you're going to identify ribs and you're going to look uh, for pleura. That will be the bat sign. We'll look at that in a minute. You will look at pleural movement. So there's two ways the pleura move. If the lung isn't actively inhaling or exhaling, you will see transmitted pulse from the cardiac um, impulse. And then with lung movement, you will see the slide. You're also going to identify lines you will see A lines, which is horizontal equidistant lines. These are reverberation act artifacts. And some B lines, which are those strobing lines uh, reflecting from the pleura all the way to the end of the screen, which we will see later. Uh, so a small amount of B lines are normal. More than three per field is abnormal. Then we'll go to subcostal, and we're going to identify the diaphragm and the spine and see the lung come across as a curtain. So those are the things that we're going to be looking at visually in a minute. Now the abnormal signs that you will uh, want to be able to recognize. Um, so Liechtenstein is the guy who really uh, kind of quantified all of this, and we'll look at some of his papers later on. So for pleural effusions, we're going to look at quad and sinusoid signs. Uh, in the uh, with the linear probes from the anterior or posterior and then that spine sign when you're looking more subcostal we're going to look for the fractal and the tissue like sign the interstitial for interstitial syndrome we'll be looking at uh, more than three B lines which is also defined as long rockets for pneumothorax we'll look at what a stratosphere or burkut sign is or a lung point so here is our first uh, view of what an ultrasound of the lung is going to look like. So you'll be looking at different segments of the lung. Uh, so this is a curved probe that's being used. You can see that here, this is this curved line. And what we do is we identify the ribs and we find the white line in between them and that is the pleura. So that is what it looks like when you're doing sort of a sagittal, sagittal cut like this. Now to, to to follow the pleural line, what we sometimes do is to turn that probe in the line of the rib so we can just follow the pleura. Um, and we'll do that to get a better sense of what's going on underneath the pleura um, and also to look for lung point. Um, so that's basically the, the beginning. Uh, to look at the whole lung, you'll go at different areas of the lung and get imaging. So the next spot that we'd look at would be the subcostal area and we'd look 
um, on both the right and the left side. So, so this is where you would place your your probe. Um, you'd be in the mid to posterior axillary lines with the probe generally pointed a little bit towards the bed and a little bit towards the head to get that right, correct angle and then move it around until you get a good window. And this is kind of what we want to see. We want to see this diaphragm. We want to see the spine to see that we're posterior enough and also be able to, to look what we call the spine side. Now you can see that the spine sort of abruptly stops here at the diaphragm. Now we know that the spine doesn't disappear, but what does disappear is that we no longer have this medium that transmits ultrasound. What we have is air, if there's lung here. If there's fluid or atelectasis here, this spine sign will continue and we will get a triangle here. So that would be called a positive spine sign. Okay. So let's look at this a little bit in real time. So what does that look like? So this would be a scan in the right subcostal area. Uh, we would be seeing um, our indicator here, which is pointing up top. The diaphragm is pointing towards the indicator. We have our spine here. Um, here is our liver kidney interface. And you can see what looks like this curtain coming down. So that's what we call the curtain sign. That's normal. So this is what a normal subcostal would look like. The spine does not go beyond the diaphragm, so there's no fluid here. And we see the curtain come up. We see no fluid below the diaphragm. We see no fluid above the diaphragm. Normal subcostal. So what is a, what is a normal kind of A-line pulse light normal lung looks like? normal lung. So we would see um, A lines, we would see pulse, and we would see, and we would see slide. So what does that look like? So we, this will be a linear probe, kind of spanning two rib sections. So here's our ribs. Now we're going to play it. So again, here's our ribs. This is our pleura. And keep an eye on this pleura. You're going to see these Tiny little, little um, looks like they call it ants on a log. So that's a normal slide. And then you're going to see these reverberation artifacts. So that's the A lines. Uh, I don't really see like really strong B lines, but occasionally you get the sense that there's like a little strobe back and forth that kind of reflects to the end of the screen. So that would be normal. Less than three of those in a field is normal. So that's a very normal looking um, lung. If you stop the lung at this point from moving, you would likely see the reflective lung pulse. This is another lung slide, a normal lung, just to get a little bit of experience looking at that. You can see the slide more. There are some bee lines here. You can see those little strobes to the end of the field here. That's those are those are B lines. So this is kind of coming up to more than three in a field, but still probably normal. So you can see those those B lines. So these are all what this is what normal lung would look like. And this is lung pulse. So keep an eye on it. Pulse, pulse. Pulse, pulse, pulse. Okay, and that's what long pulse looks like. And this is a M mode. So M mode for those um, who haven't done much before is just a recording of motion over time. So anything that's in this line, we will be recording what happens to it over time. And that's what a normal. Uh, and mode looks like it's called the seashore. So you can kind of get the sense that there's a clear line uh, with, a, with a difference below and above. And you can kind of imagine that either is the horizon, I guess, or the shore. And we'll, we're going to look at what the barcode or the stratosphere looks like later, which is uh, the um, pneumothorax equivalent on that M mode. Mostly that's what we use M mode for. Now, plural effusions. So uh, in the subcostal space, uh, we would have the patient sitting up just a little bit so that fluid would drain into that area. And these are all the different ways that a, sub, uh, that a 
pleural effusion can present. So you can have, so you would see that spine coming above the diaphragm. So here's diaphragm, 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 diaphragm. In all of these, you would see spine underneath the lung. So this is a clear of effusion, so transitive effusion. Here you can see that kind of more exudative appearance. So this is an exudative effusion. Here we have probably what looks like clots. You kind of see this frondy effect here. So a complex effusion or hemorrhagic effusion, that's usually what blood looks like. And this would be sort of a septated effusion, loculated, you know, kind of an empyema. That's what that would look like. But those are oral pleural effusions. Uh, now, when we're looking at our uh, uh, sort of ribs, kind of anterior, posterior, just on the lung side, not on the diaphragm side, what you would see is a separation between the rib cage and the, the pleura. Um, and depending on what kind of effusion you have, it would be clear like this, or it could be more uh, exudative or complex. If there's no adherence of this pleura, so it's a more of a transitive effusion, when you put an MO through it, you would see that effusion moving with, um, with respiration, and you would get this sign. So if you hear quad sign or sinusoid sign, this is what they mean, and it's a, a long ultrasound sign of pleural effusion. Now, what happens with pneumothorax? As we've said before, pneumothorax is mostly the loss of normal. So we lose sliding and B lines. Um, M mode no longer has that clear distinction between the moving parts and the not moving parts. And um, if we're if we're lucky, you don't see that with all of all pneumothoraces. You can see a lung point, which is where the part where the lung is um, collapsed and you have air in between, when you where you move and transition to a part where the air is still. Um, where there's, the lung is still expanded, um, and you can, uh, and there's no air between that and the chest wall, so you have normal lung signs. So we're going to look at this in a minute. So just uh, this is a normal lung pattern, and this is the abnormal lung pattern. This would be the lung point where you would um, see the lung move in and out, and you'd have normal lung, not normal, normal lung, not normal. So. Uh, just uh, the M mode signs. So again, for pneumothorax, uh, you lose that distinguishing line for moving on moving parts because there's no longer lung underneath there. There's uh, um, and so this actually was a very good video that I found um, from this guy Posnetki. So we're going to look at this. So first look on this side of the screen. So he's looking for his ribs. So finding the ribs. Now looking at the pleura. Pleura is not moving, not moving, following it out. And here we now see moving. So now if you look at the MO, you're going to see barcode, normal, barcode, normal, barcode, normal and that is what a long point looks like okay okay so in summary pneumothorax is mostly an absence of things so there is no pulse there is no slide there are no b lines the positive signs is that stratosphere or barcode m mode and the presence of a long point so just to be clear, though, that the absence of these things are not diagnostic of a pneumothorax unless you see a lung point. There are other reasons why the lung, uh, why you might not see lung slide or lung pulse. So, the absence of lung sliding does not imply the presence or predict completely the presence of a pneumothorax. There are other things. So, in our practice, uh, endobronchial intubation would be on the list. And then also, if you have pleural adhesions of, 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 of prior pleuridesis, um, bullae, so very limited motion of that lung, you're not going to see slide. You're also not going to see a lung point uh, when there's a circumferential pneumo. And for us, sometimes we just can't track that lung out far enough. There's arms are tucked or you have to retractors in the way. So it can be a little bit difficult, but it can point you in the right direction.
Now, endobronchial intubation, how would we distinguish that from the pneumothorax? What would you see? So the only thing that would be absent would be slide, right? The other things would still be there. You would still be pulse, you'd still see A lines, you'd still see B lines potentially. And uh, the MO would still probably be, be fairly normal looking. As if there's some lung pulse, you'd still have that motion that would, would give you that clear line. So really, um, the only absence would be a slide on the side that's not being ventilated. So opposite from where your tube is gone. What is interstitial syndrome? Well, interstitial syndrome is where ultrasound par excellence beats clinical exam and x-rays. We are, it's much more sensitive for picking this up early. So, and for us, that's super important because we want to know if our patients are fluid overloaded, if there's, you know, early acute lung injury, you know, if, if we start getting fluid in the alveolar, we want to be careful to treat those lungs very carefully, get the peep up, not give too much fluid. So what are we going to look for? We're going to look for these strobing lines, which we talked about before, which are the B lines. Um, and they can be, be progressively worse. So less than three is considered normal. More than three is starting to become abnormal, um, usually with a score of around one. And then when they start becoming increased like this and coalescent, uh, that would imply an increase in interstitial syndrome. Consolidation would be our next thing to look at. So. Um, consolidation, consolidation and atelectasis would look very similar for our person. Um, so one of the things to look for is, is recruitability um, of that area of collapse. And one of what, what you can look for is whether there is um, still open bronchogram. So that would imply that that lung is recruitable. That's maybe a bit advanced, but just so you know, um, that's something we could do. So what are we going to see? We're going to see what's called this tissue-like sign. So the lung no longer really looks like lung. Well, you can't see lung. You can see this lung because it's no longer filled with air. It's, it's tissue-like. So just to orientate you again, you'd have the spine here. This is the liver and diaphragm. So there's some effusion here. And then this atelectatic tissue-like lung. Same thing here. You have your di diaphragm of liver, your spine, and this area here that is uh, very tissue-like. Now, what they can call the fractal sign is when this pleura becomes all irregular um, and broken up. So you no longer have that clean pleural sign. That's called the fractal sign. Okay, so we can score the lung based on the degree of consolidation sort of the progressive increase in pathology that we're seeing. And the way to do that is that the lung gets divided into different quadrants, and then each of those quadrants gets scored by what the pathology is or how extensive the pathology is. So zero is normal, so less than three B lines. One would be distinctive B lines, more than three. When you score two, there's a coalescence of B lines, and three, you get that air bronchogram tissue um, and um, a fractal pleura is kind of what you're looking at. So different studies have divided the lung in different scoring section. Uh, that's not as important as just um, understanding what the different uh, step ups in pathology looks like. So score zero, you have your normal pleura with some A lines. Score one, you start getting the B lines, so more than three per field. Score two is the more coalescent B lines. And then score three is where you get the more thickened and interrupted pleural lines and the tissue like lung. So here, this is really bad, really interrupted uh, pleural line, very fractal pleural. Uh, here is another uh, chest CT equivalent where they look at how bad the lung is versus what you see on ultrasound. So ENF is your right anterior part of the lung, so not as bad. Score 2. Um, INJ is your left anterior, so even better. Score 1 and 2. And then when you come into the posterior areas here, um, so... Uh, G and H is your right posterior, so scores three here you can see significantly more 
more pathology on CT reflected by this uh, more coalescent thickened pleural fractal sign, and this is on the left posterior. So they're still scoring this too, although I would say that this is starting to come up to a three probably. Uh, so just again, signs uh, just showing that different studies have different ways of dividing the lung uh, score. This is a healthy lung with your A lines and your normal pleura. Here you start seeing more B lines, more than three per field. Here you can see the more coalescent B lines with the irregular fractal pleura. And here the lung is really turning into tissue with this very fractal pleura. So I think you can start appreciating what different degrees of consolidation look like. And just again to um, make sure you see that this is with the curved probe so you get that increased depth. Uh, so we're not so much interested in just looking at the pleura, but what is um, going on behind it. Uh, some more just comparative pictures. So what are we seeing here? We're looking at this atelectasis, um, which you can see here with the fractal tissue sign. This is a pneumothorax reflected here on ultrasound by the Burr code. Here is an effusion and on ultrasound here we can see the, the, the fluid um, between the lung and the chest wall. So we're going to show you an example of one normal study that Ryden did. So this is not uh, the perfect study and the point of this was to show you that different patients have you know again different quality imaging so it's not always textbook but uh, I want to get you a sense of what the expectation is what you should record when you come into our program on what a full normal study would look like for us in anesthesia so uh, please remember to precisely define your pleural line use gravity so um, make sure that when you're looking for fluid above the diaphragm the patient is sitting up a little bit uh, if your patient is flat on their back, your pneumothorax points will be a little bit different than if your patient's sitting up in terms of where air would be best demonstrated. Um, if you're looking for fluid in the abdomen, uh, you'd want to think about tipping the patient, sort of head up for fluid in the pelvis versus head down for fluid um, under the diaphragm to be able to get these collections to, to uh, get to where you're scanning. And then for serial investigations, make sure you record um, on your image what your standard points were. So our first thing that we're going to look at is our linear probe. So mostly in the OR, we can stop ventilation and really record that long pulse. So that's good to look at so you know what that looks like in, every, in your normal patients. It just the more normal you look at, the better your eye gets. So that was pulse, this was be slide. So you would do that on each side, like left and right and upper chest. And then you would also do an M mode on each side. And then you would do some curved uh, image acquisition. And we can see the two ribs, we can see our A lines can see slide and you can see how right and recorded the zones so that's super good again you can see pleura you can see the a lines and here we're looking for those b line strobe signs going right towards the end and we're looking to see if there's any pathology below and then we go to the diaphragms we get that right subcostal, I want to make sure we see our spine, we see our diaphragm, we see our kidney interface for our, um, if we're doing a fast, when we're looking at lung, we're mostly looking here. You can see that this patient was uh, had fairly bad COPD, so the curtain sign was not as, if, uh, as clear. Um, but remember from that previous patient how that lung can sometimes come down over here and shows that very nice curtain sign. So not as much lung movement here, but that's sometimes just how it is. And then our next loop, that's our last loop, I think, for the study. This is on the left. So spleen is usually, you don't get as good a window for your ultrasound. We still see our spine, see our kidney spleen, our diaphragm is here, no fluid here, and we're looking for that diaphragm, but 
and a further curtain sign, but again, not, not super visible. Okay. And that's what a normal study would look like that you'd record for us. Good. Well, thanks for listening. Um, lung ultrasound, just to recap, is easy. Make sure you use both your linear probe and your curve probe. Um, find those ribs first. Make sure you look at the pleura and what's going on below it. And then go look at those uh, subcostal areas. Okay. Have fun scanning. See you in the OR.